Hi, this is George Cow, and I'm happy to be here with Diane Allen. She's one of the members of my Master Heartbeat Coaching Program. She's fantastic. She's got uh, her own podcast. She's got a retreat coming up and a lot of experience, wisdom, tips to share on the entrepreneurial journey. So I think you'll enjoy this interview. And Diane, thanks for doing this while it's late over there for you, but thanks for showing up. Oh, you're welcome. It's fun to be here with you. I love it. Yeah. So Diane, um, what I'll do is uh, first, I'm going to actually have you introduce yourself because you've got a lot going on and you've written several books. You, I mean, here I am introducing you already. <laughs> you have worked with some superstars in terms of performers and athletes mm -hmm. and kind of coaching, mentoring them in, in the mindset sort of personal transformation area. But I'll, I'll let you share what, how you would like to present yourself in terms of what kind of work you do with people and um, yeah, what, what do you love to talk about in your books and in your retreats and in your content? Oh, we could go on for a long time, yeah. but I, yeah. I, I guess that the most important thing that hits me is I consider myself an, an intuitive counselor mentor person. Mm -hmm. I lead with my intuition followed with my academic knowledge base. And so it's like a holistic thing, but it's not the typical mind, body, spirit. It encompasses much more than that. And so whenever I'm working with somebody, my intuition is where, where I'm going with them. In fact, I just finished the session with someone and all it was about was what was I getting intuitively to help them. So normally that's how I operate. And then I also have things where I have the science to back it up and those kinds of things because my clients are people who overthink, who are, have a really great life usually already and want to either up their game or there's a challenge that kind of is threading through their life that it keeps annoying them in all these different areas and they haven't been able to sort out that thing. And I'm a genius at helping them find that thing and then sorting out how, how, how to not have it have like a rub in their saddle, so to speak, you know? So that's what I do. And so I do it in lots of different ways. If you're right, I just, in fact, I'm, my next book is at the printer now. It was uploaded today um, out of edits. And so that's book, I think number five or six. And my retreat's coming up. I do an annual retreat focused to help people really like up level their game. So. It's all about visioning and I use my intuition. So all of my events and everything I do is a one-off because it's who's in the room and, and what the energy is and, and what gets brought to the table. That, that's what makes it so exciting. Yeah, and people love it. People come back year after year. Yes. And mm -hmm. That's great. That, okay, so share with us. I mean, there's so much you could, you could share, but I mean, you have, of course, obviously you created a services business. You do, you know, counseling, consulting, mentoring, however you would call that. And then you also have books that you sell. You also do an in-person retreat. You also have a podcast and you have a Facebook page. So what have you, what have you learned over the years about your business or what, what, what would you like to highlight today? What I would like to highlight, I think the most thing that I've learned, especially working with you and I, say this to everybody I know, I use your name a lot, not in vain though. Um, <laughs> I say that you talk about being authentic. It's, you know, authentic business coach. And I believe in authenticity, but I think in over the time that I've been around you and the other people in your group and your circle, and of course I'm one of them, is taking that authenticity to a more pure level. Like I was authentic before, but for me, just to introduce myself as an intuitive counselor person, I didn't say that before because that's really who I am. And there was that part of me that was always holding that piece back or saying what I thought was the acceptable thing, whatever that meant. And I had all these ideas and all these beliefs that were not fully accurate. They weren't wrong. They just weren't fully accurate. So the moment I kind of kept peeling off all these layers and every phone call and every every interaction with any of your content or any of the authentic kinds of things with other people in MasterHeart, I'm like, well, what's digging deeper? Deep, what's deeper? What's, what's get, get another veil off, so to speak. And so then I put on my LinkedIn that I was intuitive empath, which I am. And people started calling me because they want to be on my podcast and they want to connect with me. And people are looking for the very gift I possess that I didn't even give any credence to because it's always been me. So I didn't realize that. So I, that really was a huge epiphany for me and it really was a turning point and it stopped a lot of struggle 
um, as far as what to put out, when and how and all of that. Wow, I love that. Thank you for sharing that example. It's so true that we typically present ourselves in what we have been trained to be a socially acceptable way. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the internet, especially, I mean, if you were building a business in a small village, you know, you could not leave that small village and all your clients had to come from that small village. You kind of have to present yourself in a way that the, you know, your fellow villagers won't like run away, right? Because that's all you have. But with the right. internet, you have the entire world of hundreds of millions of internet users, well, billions actually of internet users, but hundreds of millions that you could easily reach through social media. And, uh, you know, it's like whatever you are, can, you're willing to authentically say, step into is that this is who I am. There is going to be somebody out there who says, oh my God, you're exactly who I've been looking for. <laughs> you know, and in yeah. fact, it sounds like you, you already have had a network of people who've been kind of um you know looking at your work and when you when you step into oh i'm an intuitive empath intuitive counselor people go that's right that's that's what i sense about you and that's so true and yes i want to work with you so i love that thank you for thank you for sharing uh what else what else have you what's what else is kind of alive for you right now in terms of business learnings and, and any encouragement for entrepreneurs well i think that being an entrepreneur is the most amazing thing on the planet and I think a lot of people become entrepreneurs by accident. They're not planning it. Um, but entrepreneurs have the best brains and, and fast thinking and excitement about them. And there's a passion of, of life that's different. So anybody who wonders if they are an entrepreneur or not an entrepreneur, if they're wondering, the answer is yes, of course. Um, and so then it's just time to, to step into it. You know, I think that anybody can start from anywhere. I mean, I started my business six years ago with less than $500. And I'm two of the years of the six, I've made six figures. It's been real up and down. Um, and a lot of it's been my own shifting and growing. But overall, everything is wonderful and beautiful. I have a retreat coming up with some people who've, who've come to everyone up. It's the sixth annual. They've been to all six. And if I, you know, they follow me around, I don't, it's, I didn't know why, now I know why, <laughs> you know? And so I think, I think it's an amazing thing to be able to bring our gift and, and have the forum now in the world to say, this is the cool thing that God gave me and this is the neat gift I'm bringing. And so let's everybody share in the luster of it all. Let's everybody share in the beauty of each one of our amazing gifts. Like I, there's nothing better than that. I just, I just can't imagine doing anything different. <laughs> By, by the way, earlier that was my my dog Buddy barking. Uh, I'm so sorry. I about love that. Buddy. He's so cute. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd love for you to share with the audience a little bit about a little bit of what you teach your clients, or 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 maybe it's something you're going to teach at the retreat. Um, I mean, we could talk with you for you know eight hours straight, I'm sure. But uh, what's something? What's a nugget that? you think is particularly useful for people when you share it either well may could be something on your podcast as well i think that the thing that pops in right away is the whole idea of being aware and aligned it's like aa right like having awareness like real awareness not like oh awareness real awareness awareness of ourselves and our own role in things and awareness of what's going on like i call it playing heads up ball like paying attention and like that deeper awareness and with it, a perfect alignment of mind, body, soul, and social world, agenda, all of it. Of having such an alignment that we're laser-like focused on whatever the task is. And what I see with everybody that I work with, they tend to be distracted and not fully aware. And the moment we bring into awareness, okay, what's, what's happening? without judgment of good or bad or right or wrong. I don't use any of that. It's just, what is it? Like, what are we looking at here? And then how can we be inner aligned in order to bring out and emerge into the world the perfect solution or the perfect next thing, whatever that is. And so those are like my two big things. Like my, my retreat this year is called Take Me Out of My Head. And it's to help people who think a lot really get into that deeper awareness and know when they're connected and know it, know it in their soul so that when they're in a board meeting or they're flying or they're doing something, they know. 
And when anyone comes from that inner authenticity and that level of integrity, you can't lose, you, you know, there's no option. So those are my big things. I always start there. And most of the time people are not aligned. They think aligned means mentally focused and it does not. It means that emotionally and spiritually and mentally, everything's going together and aligned, like floating down the river, right? And many, many people don't have that alignment. Even, you know, people who are doing really well in some areas, and that's where I, a lot of times the rub is of not being satisfied fully, is not having alignment. So tell, tell us more about that. What, what do you mean by alignment? You mentioned some of the spiritual, social things, but maybe you could kind of talk us through that a little bit there. Alignment, it, for me, the way I use it is, does your face look like how your insides feel? Does your spirit, the animating spirit part of us, give you goosebumps when you get all excited? Is it all and it clicks in? It's like, like, like just happened to me when I did it. Where all parts of our being, our mind, our spiritual mind, our ideas, our expression, our actions and our words, all are very together. Every, there's not a contradiction. We're not, not saying I am a great intuitive counselor out loud to you and then in my head saying, well, not really, or if only they knew, or well, that's not really it. That's not aligned, right? It would be aligned if I say that to you and in my authority, in my authenticity spiritually and soul-wise and emotionally, it all is true, like a deeper truth. So that's what I mean by alignment, where it's all there. Like when I look at your face and I look at your demeanor and I watch how you're, you're carrying your body and what's coming out of your mouth and how it all looks, face, color, everything, does it line up? Mm. And awareness is what you're saying is yes. the first step to that. Yes. So, of course, a lot of us have heard of mindfulness. Uh, maybe some of us meditate or some some of this journal or something. So what do you, what do you say about awareness? I mean, how does, how does that happen? Well, awareness is to me has lots of different levels to it. And it's kind of everything from paying attention to what you're thinking about because every thought's a prayer and every prayer is answered. So if I say five thoughts that are positive and gone going, and then, you know, a whole bunch more that aren't, then I'm getting mixed messages, right? So there's that piece of it there's awareness of that deeper part of okay how how is everything coming together for me from the inside out right and so i i teach a lot about how to be aware how to pay attention pay attention to your thoughts pay attention to your feelings paying attention to what you're doing i give a homework assignment to teach people how to start being aligned and aware um, that's fun, especially for people who are stoic, who are living from their neck up and everything's in their head and they, they can't get in their heart very easily, but they want to. I, I call it facial aerobics. And I tell them to go stand in front of a mirror and make all the funny faces they can as fast as they can, like that, and make themselves laugh. And doing that helps them get more aware. Like when I move my face this way or I smile that way or I frown or I make my eyes look down or I make this goofy face or I move my body, this is what it is doing. And this is how it's affecting me. So that then when they're in a real life situation, they're able to orchestrate their body, move it in a certain way or watch their face to make sure they don't look like they have a scowl on their face and they're mad and really they're just thinking, you know, so they don't get misunderstood. That's great. That's a, so few people talk about that. And I really appreciate you bringing that up. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. You're so um, the kind of work, let's talk about the work that you do with mm -hmm. people. Um, you, for anybody who's interested in Diane's work, you know, go to her website. Of course, Vision Applied is the website. I'll put the link in the notes of the video. Uh, you have a podcast and you have interviewed a lot of people on the podcast. Um, I've been interviewed myself. Thank you for that. Uh, and you have a couple of books, so people can check that check you out on Amazon and get your books. Um, you've got this retreat coming up, and this in-person retreat uh, is wh sh where. Sh share with us a bit about that. It's October nineteenth to the twenty-first, and it is at Hammock Beach Resort in Palm Coast, Florida, which is 
on the Atlantic. It's right on the Atlantic. It's a little about an hour south of Jacksonville. And it's a golf resort that is just absolutely spectacular. So we're going to be in this amazing room overlooking the Atlantic in a golf course and having a great time there. Yeah, it's awesome. And then, so how, how do you do work with people who aren't uh, local to you? Or, you know, tell us about that. I do work with people all over the country um, and Canada right now. Actually, I had somebody recently I worked with in Sweden. So I use Zoom a lot and I do a lot of work with people however they want to. I'm very flexible. I have one client of mine that flies in to see me for a long weekend every three or four months because he doesn't want to deal with the Zoom thing because he's not from the city. I have another client, the one I travel with, my, my musician that I work with, he, um, we travel and we use Zoom and we use FaceTime and we do whatever combination suits him. I accept people to, for me to work with that I really believe want the service and want to grow. And so I devote my, my full attention to them. So I, I pay very close attention to my own alignment in that to make sure that when I talk to somebody for the, my first phone call, that I truly can offer something to them that's of great value. So a lot of, a lot of it on Zoom. Some people come to see me. Sometimes I go see them. I'm going to see a client in November who's in Arizona. And so I'll be gone from Florida for a few days to be in Arizona working with that client, but then all my other um, virtual people I'll still see. So That's great. That's great. It's fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and you mentioned this before, but like, what do you see as kind of a thread of um, the clients that you just find that has the most impact you have the most impact on what's, you mentioned overthinking, but say, say more about that. The clients that I, that I work with the best that I really see that, that me walking into their life was a great thing and them finding me was great are the people who tend to be very contemplative, yet very open-minded and teachable and also have their own sense of who they are. So there's, there's something to work with in that sense. It's just not like... I'm in a place where I don't know who I am and what I'm doing. So they have that sense. And they love to go on a journey because I am predictably unpredictable and not even I know what's going to happen next a lot of the times because I am so intuitive and I do go by that, that we could think we're going to talk about a certain topic. And then if I get an intuitive hit that something else is going on or let's talk about this, I will not shield it from them. I will say it to them and I will say, well, let's look at this because this is what's coming through. So they have to be that flexible and understand that when you live in the intuitive world, there's a lot of diversity and there's a lot of surprises for everybody. Um, I've never had an intuitive hit that came through that was sad or upset or, you know, upset, you know, was harmful in any way or upset somebody. It's mostly been messages of go for it, stand in the spotlight, you know, stand in your authority, who you are is perfect, whole and complete. And I'm the jumper cables to remind you of that so that you can go be as cool and awesome as you want to be and know that somebody's got your back. Mm -hmm. That's great. So as we end this interview, is there any other kind of parting words of encouragement or advice you want to offer the, those who are watching? I think the, the best thing I can say is keep your face to the sun and surround yourself with people who understand you, who get you, and don't be shy and don't be ashamed of that. So find your people and be one of that group of the, that people and immerse yourself in people who support you with what you're doing because if it's your heart's desire and you feel it with every cell of your being, it's meant to happen. And don't listen to any of the naysayers. Talk to the people who will help show you what to do and ask you the right questions instead of, try to tell you how not to do it. Mm. Thank you, Diane. Thanks for being here and thanks for doing your work. You're welcome. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, absolutely.